Welcome to Nourishing Maine, filmed at Dragonfly Co. Farm here in Dresden, Maine. I'm Marge Kilkelly. And I'm Mary-Kate Rennie. And today we want to talk about Thanksgiving. The most important thing about Thanksgiving is being with family and friends. And it can often be stressful and intimidating to think about cooking a Thanksgiving dinner, but it doesn't have to be. And we really thought about this and titled it Thanksgiving, Yes You Can. And yes, we have. Some of the ingredients for Thanksgiving um, in our previous episodes, um, we've had them made. You know, we had um, refrigerator pickles for that appetizer plate. Uh, we made mashed potatoes um, with sundaes and, and salad. And then apple crisp is a delicious dessert for Thanksgiving. And if you're intimidated about making a pie, mm. make apple crisp. Put ice cream on it, put whipped cream on it, everybody's going to be happy. <laughs> That's for sure. So today we're going to fill in the pieces and we're going to add a few things to this to make your dinner complete. We're going to talk turkey <laughs> and then we're going to talk about carrots and how incredibly easy it is to make cranberry sauce and stuffing. And those things um, will round out your dinner. And uh, we expect that Joe probably has some ideas about gravy because Joe really loves gravy. <laughs> and sometimes gravy can be the most intimidating ingredient because everyone has their favorite texture or flavor or how, how they go about making it. So that, that is one of the things we want to make um, easy for everybody. You know, yes you can and it is a little bit of time management but as you'll see today it streams well and it's, and it's going to work for you. And so many things can be made ahead. For example, the pickles can be made a mm. couple of weeks ahead. The apple crisp can be made several days ahead. The cranberry sauce we're going to talk about can be made ahead. So a lot of things you can make ahead of that dinner so that when it's time for dinner, you can also relax and enjoy your family and friends. Yeah, one of the best things about Thanksgiving vegetables is they're sturdy. You know, they're the fall <laughs> harvest vegetables. So to Marge's point, you can make your mashed potatoes and they refrigerate beautifully. I think you can even freeze them, but I'm not sure about that. But mm. carrots is another one. Yep. Um, sweet potatoes, people love those as yep. well. So that's a, a, a wonderful thing about Thanksgiving veggies is that you can get them done ahead of time. And we're going to move on to turkey. And one of the things about cooking with poultry is you want to make sure you're not cross-contaminating. You want to make sure that your area is clean, you bring the turkey out, and then afterwards you make sure that um, everything is cleaned up before you put other food on there. So we're going to go get a turkey. And I'm going to go wash my hands. There you, you go. go. All right. How heavy is that? This is this is a 12 pound turkey and we got it frozen mm -hmm. and thawed it in the refrigerator for two days. There's nothing worse <laughs> than not giving yourself enough time to thaw your turkey. True. And you end up trying to figure out how to deal with it mm -hmm. and it's really tough. Yeah. So give it, yourself the time it takes for it to thaw. Don't expect in the fridge. Yes, in the fridge. Do not thaw it on the counter. Um, which some people do thinking it's going to make it go faster, but it's really not a good thing. So, how can I help? We are going to, you can help me unwrap it. All Let's right. See. Got some scissors. Some, there you go. Some cutting done here. Turkey! Mm -hmm, there he is. It's completely thawed, it's chilled. Right. And it's good to do this over a pan like this because it's very juicy since it's defrosted. And I've got it. And this goes straight in the trash. And I go Which is and right wash here. my hands. Okay. So one of the other things about turkeys, um, again, this is a 12 pound turkey. It's going to serve about eight people. And you want to, um, it's not advised to stuff the turkey any longer. And so we want to make stuffing because stuffing is lovely. And so how do you make stuffing 
if you aren't going to put it in the turkey and get all that good turkey flavor? Well, first you go for the giblet hunt. <laughs> Front and center, I think we can find yeah, them. Yeah, this one's easy. This can be Look a very intimidating aspect of cooking your first turkey, um, a fresh turkey. Um, they do come with the giblets and the neck, I believe. I'm not sure if, what the other parts are, but they make delicious gravy and we'll show you how, to, how we're going to do that. So we're going to take what is included in the giblets. It's heart, liver, and gizzard. And those are all tasty parts of the turkey and they make an absolutely wonderful broth. And then there's also a neck. And, and again, we go in search. And it's usually, ta -da! You know, it's the largest piece and it's packed um, in the back. So you now know what items to look for and you know you've got them all. And there are some times when um, on a really large turkey, some of the giblets may be in the backside. So if you don't find the giblets in the cavity, look on the other side. We're going to take these giblets and we're going to add some onion, some green onion that mm. just got picked from the garden. Marge's herbs from right out front. Sage. Sage. Which is just I know, so lovely. Thanksgiving. It is delicious. And a little parsley. bit of parsley. Yep. We're going to put those in there. Yep. And I'll get it some parsley for you. You can use the stem and all in yeah, this case. Yeah, of course. Good way to use the stems. Actually, actually. it is, yeah. Lots of flavor. And I'm going to cover this with water and put it on the stove in order to make the broth that's going to be for our gravy and also for the stuffing. As we mentioned before, sometimes the gravy can be the hardest part, or at least the most intimidating part. But we have a Joe way that'll make that be a completely easy part of the Thanksgiving meal. So again, if we're not going to be, if we're not going to be stuffing the turkey, but we want the turkey to have that wonderful herb flavor, we're going to take all the rest of these herbs and we're going to just push them right into that cavity. And I'm going to also cut up an apple that we're also going to stick in there. And you and can fold them. Gives it some moistness um, and it also provides just some, just some really wonderful Thanksgiving kind of flavor that. Um, Aromatics, everybody wants Ara yes yes and you can also put some of that around it because you are going to get more broth around um, you know from cooking the turkey mm -hmm. so you can put it around you can yes, put it and in and it's all lovely do you put anything on top of the turkey I don't usually you don't I like it to just sort of have that kind of natural turkey look gotcha. to it. Um, <laughs> but if you've seen your family or friends, you know, um, separate the skin from the breast meat, you can um, wedge herbs in there as well, or butter. There's, le I've seen lemon, mm. lemon slices so in there. You can put it under the and skin And it's not too. particularly hard to, to separate, as you can see. Yeah. So that's another way to add some flavor. Yep. And do you tent it? I sometimes do. I sometimes, and tenting means to take a piece of foil and just put over the top like a little pup tent so that it keeps some of the moisture in there as well. Um, the turkey is going to go in the oven at 350 degrees and it's going to cook for 13 minutes a pound. Most turkeys will come with a little pop-up timer if you're buying it from the store. If you're buying a turkey from the farm, they may not have pop-up timers, but you can buy one. Or you can just check the temperature and you want it to be about 165 degrees at its thickest point of meat. And where would that be? Where would you insert that thermometer if we didn't have a pop-up? I would do it right in through here and into the deep part of the breast, but also in behind that leg. Both. Right. Just you want to, to get try into both. the muscle. You don't you want, want to be against the, the leg bone. Right. Yeah. So this is going to go into the oven and we are going to clean up the cutting board and get ready to make stuffing. It'll give us plenty of time to do all those other side dishes it that we're going to do. Welcome to Joe's Way. Today we're going to be making smooth gravy. Some people like lumpy gravy, I don't. And to make smooth gravy, I take a mason jar, put any jar will do. I put three tablespoons of flour in it. 
because I got three cups of gravy juice that I'm making. You take this, put the cover on. This is really difficult. And then you shake it. And what that does is it puts all the flour into suspension so that when you pour it into your hot gravy, it just blends right in. You stir it while it's cooking, and it will thicken it right up. I'm going to head over to the stove now. I've shaken this up enough. It's all in the suspension. There's no residue in the bottom of the bottle. Turn the, turn the juice on. Then we take the flour mixture and a spoon and we slowly start stirring, pouring the flour mixture in. And we just stir, stir, stir. You stir it till it thickens up to the consistency that you like. Now this is just starting to thicken a little bit. You can see how it puddles on the spoon. If you heat it too much or put too much flour in, when it cools down it will be just like jello. And all you have to do is put it back on the burner and it will go back into suspension and into a liquid. Basically what I'm doing when I do this is I'm heating and evaporating the water that I had in the bottle so that it brings it back down so that the flour can actually thicken the, the, the sauce. Gravy is probably one of the best ingredients you can put on food. You can't mess gravy up unless you overcook it and burn it to the pan. But if, you, if you're watching it, you can see now that this is, this is a little thicker than it was because we're actually boiling the water off that we put in when I poured the flour mixture in. So once that goes away, it will start thickening a lot quicker. Now you can see that it's actually coating the spoon. And some people like their gravy runny. Other people like it thicker. Uh, you can put giblets in. You can put whatever you've got for meat juices. If you cook a roast into it and have it lumpy. But that lumpy is a good lump, not a, not a bad flour lump. You can see that it's, it's really getting coated and thickening up. We take it off the stove, bring it over here, and it's going to... Nobody ever serves super hot gravy. It's always mellowed out a little bit. As this mellows out or sits here, it's going to get thicker. But you can see that it's thickened up on a spoon. You can see the sheen on it. And that's, this is just about right. Now that the gravy's at the consistency that we like it at, it's sat here about 10 minutes and, it, and it's just right. We're going to Put this into a gravy boat for a serving. And when you do this, another little tip is pour away from you. That way there, if it splatters, it's going to splatter away from you and not at you. And that's the Joe way. Hey, thanks, Joe. I love smooth gravy and I can't wait to taste it. And now we're going to talk about stuffing because one of my favorite parts of a Thanksgiving dinner is stuffing. 
and it can be, it is, a very simple process. We have about 10, um, 10 cups of cubed bread. And sometimes what I do is just save the ends of bread or extra pieces of bread that I've got and put them in the freezer. And then when it comes to um, getting ready for stuffing, I just cut them up and, and use them that way. Um, so you don't have to go buy special bread for Thanksgiving um, stuffing. And if you really are intimidated about adding herbs and all the other things, you can always just buy a box of stuffing and follow the instructions in terms of how to make stuffing. And if you do use the box um, stuffing mix, which we all have, or I certainly oh, sure. have, it's great around you know, different times of year besides Thanksgiving, is you can still doll it up with incredibly other, mm. incredibly delicious other ingredients besides just you know, the instructions there, as we both know. That's right. <laughs> Sometimes I put apples in stuffing. Well, and so I love dried cranberries in stuffing, mm. and this is probably the worst things I like pecans I like nuts in my dressing oh, I know but a lot there, of people so this is the you know we're gonna go through the the traditional um, stuffing and as a kid I did not understand stuffing did you I mean well it's no. this, this and then some people call it dressing and I never really oh, understood yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean I was like I don't know why when there's beautiful biscuits over there why I want this lump of oh. yeah so but how far we come as we grow up. Yeah. <laughs> and the stuffing. day after Thanksgiving to have a sandwich with oh, stuffing, turkey. Yeah. It's almost. We're better. there. Yeah. All right. So as you know, we made the, we made the broth um, with the giblets. And it is absolutely wonderful. We drained it so to separate all those herbs and, and the turkey parts. And we're going to take about three or four cups of that broth. And we're going to pour it over this bread. Boy, that mm. smells good already. Isn't wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then you want to talk about veggies. Yes, so we've got probably two cups of chopped onions, and of course you can go big or small. Um, and this is, you know, big or small chunks. I was going to say, you know me, I always do lots of onions. You do. Yeah. <laughs> you and your onions. Like I would. You know, I mean, I, I, we, could we don't go have a to use smaller. all of that. We don't have to use all of it, and you can chop it a little bit smaller, but that would be. But not for Marge, so we're going to make Marge dressing. Oh, stuffing. <laughs> you don't want it all in there? No, we don't need all right. it. All right. And then celery is, I'm going to say, is a must-have. It's a must-have. Yeah. Yeah. And this this is cut up at the same you know chunks as the onions, and you can go yeah. smaller if you'd like. Do okay. you want it all? No. Let's wait. That's good. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, sage. And so this is some sage that I have um, from my garden that I've dried. Um, and I'm just going to eat here about rubbed sage. Well, that's what I'm doing is I'm rubbing the sage. Mm -hmm. And I've also added a little bit of parsley to this dried oh. parsley, which just let me gives it a slightly you. different different flavor. Make your hands. It's nice brighter. Sage. I know. It's, it's like <laughs> incense. Right? It is. It is. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the amount, again, it really, you know, we're, we're into that whole create your own recipe thing. Some people like lots of sage, some people aren't so into it, some people like parsley, some people don't. Um, and when, you, when we do stir this all together, it really, the, con the um, consistency of it, you know, if you like it a little wetter, you know, there's nothing wrong with adding a little boiling water or hot water. It's not gonna throw the taste uh, flavors that much right. if it's too dry. I'll share the eggs oh, I with know. you. Thank you. I'm going to put two eggs in and the eggs are really important because the eggs are a binder and that's what keeps it together that's what makes it stuffing and then that's a lot of stuffing that is a lot of stuffing mm -hmm. <laughs> and then melted butter um the melted butter i mean it's butter it's bread it's thanksgiving and you need that fat mm. Oh, yeah. Um, in this to make it <laughs> tied together. Well, I mean, just in general. Just in general. Everything's better just with butter, general. we all know. But, um, for and the then stuffing. we just start mixing mm -hmm. it up. And we're going to, once it's mixed up, you can get a, a, you can get a taste for whether or not you, you, know, you need a little bit more water, you want it a little moister, and then we just put it in this little casserole dish. And again, you put it in the oven, 
and it's forgiving. Um, it is. I, like, like the vegetables I mentioned earlier, um, all of these items on your Thanksgiving table are um, pretty, pretty forgiving when you've got to put so many different items on your table. It's interesting too about even using bread. Um, I grew up using saltine crackers. Oh. We always had saltine crackers for stuffing. I don't know. Wow, I so, haven't had that. Yeah, but I it know. Would, it's but all... it would completely work. Yeah. And oh, also, um, I bet everybody has their own experience and what they expect at the Thanksgiving table. Oh, you yeah. know, what their what their grandmother will bring or what, you know, who brings what. And it's interesting because the texture of this looks exactly the way that I would have it, big cubes of bread. Mm -hmm. um, but um, my grandmother would grind her crusts and again, a week oh. or two before Thanksgiving, she would, you'd see toast, or not <laughs> toast, you'd see slices of bread all around the kitchen and we're drying it for Thanksgiving. But oh, then she put it, I don't know, she probably just crumpled it, but it was very finely, um, you know, like breadcrumbs. Yeah. And it was, you know, just a, a milder um, and almost easier way to eat it. And, and so that's my fa one of my favorite things. I'm actually going to add a little bit more water See? to that. See, yeah, that's yep. what happens. Um, although they are looking, um, you know, almost done. Yeah, but you can hear it. Great. It's kind of, it's still kind of crunchy, and you do want to have it be a little softer than that. Yeah. Is there, it, that's is that perfect. Yeah, look at that. Mm. And the herbs are getting. I do love stuff. Yeah, it is good all year round. It is. It's one of the few things. Nice and, starch. And actually, you can use this um, to Shall do I? pork. Um, I mean, this is a, a good stuffing for pork. It's a good stuffing for anything. You could probably stuff a squash with it. You could. You could st stuff anything with it. Yeah. I think there that's going to do it. That's you do want do a little it. bit of breathing room. Yep. Um, you don't want to pack it too tight because it does need to breathe so that all the good flavors can percolate. So there's stuffing ready to go in the oven. And next we're gonna talk about cranberry sauce. Mm, can't wait. Mm. It's time to get the turkey out. I yeah. think we should call Joe. Yeah. It's, Joe. A, it's a heavy lift. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> this is a magical moment on Thanksgiving. It is. I think. Whew. Look at the herbs on there. Thanks, Joe. You're welcome. It's beautiful. Do you want me to lift it onto the platter? Yes, please. Sure. Where is it? Oh, look at that. Oh, get the knife out of the way. It is beautiful, isn't it? Though? It is. It's so nice. And the brown. herbs retain their they do. Their and shape, but their flavors throughout the, flavors the bird. Are amazing. Yes. Perfect. That's Thanksgiving. Is it hot? Yeah, it is. You got it. Thanks, Joe. Oh my goodness. Bye. One thing here. There. There we go. So now that the turkey has to rest and we get to smell it and, and look forward <laughs> to eating it, the last minute things or the things that don't take very long will come together really quickly. The cranberry sauce, um, the vegetables on the, back, on the back of the stove. And now that the turkey's out of the oven, we've made space for the other things that need to be heated up for the dinner table. If you've got some biscuits or rolls that you want to put in there or vegetables that you want to stay warm, um, even the oven turned off after the turkey comes out is a great space to warm those things. Mm -hmm. So you have that space as well as the top of your stove. Mm -hmm. So let's make some cranberry sauce. All right, let's. What we've done for the cranberry sauce, this is so simple. We have boiled one cup of water and one cup of sugar, and we are going to add one bag of cranberries. That's it. Mm. The cranberries are gonna pop, and they are done. And it doesn't take long at all. No, it doesn't. It's sugar water with a one to one to one proportion. Isn't that gorgeous? Mm -hmm. That's the color of Thanksgiving. <laughs> it isn't is the it? color of Thanksgiving. And you just want to keep an eye on it. And once those berries start to pop, they will um, release all of their pectin and it will just make a lovely cranberry sauce. Now, 
you can, if you want to, add some walnuts to it. You could add some chopped apple to it. Orange peel. Orange peel would be lovely in it. Um, and a friend of ours actually said horseradish, which I've never had, never Ooh. thought about, but he seemed really happy about. <laughs> so that was fine. Um, again, it's... Uh, you do want to bring it to a boil. It's, yep. a, it's a hard and fast boil, but do keep an eye on it because the sugar and the pectin will, will go to town on your stove top. And while I'm doing this, Mary Kate, I can hand you some carrots yes. that you could actually season right over I there. Will. So carrots are one of those things that you can do ahead of time. They're, again, very sturdy. These we had boiled in um, a little bit of honey and a little bit of um, water, a little bit of salt and pepper, and cook them um, in a simmer with about a half a cup of water for about six or seven minutes. And then the, once the water's evaporated, um, they're ready. You, um, they're, you don't want them too, too soft, but they do take a minute to cook. And then again, you can put them in the fridge and then just re reheat them up on the stove top so you're not taking up all that space in the oven. And we'll put this in a pretty bowl. We will. Um, there's maple syrup there to add to them. Got it. Do we want to do any herbs, Marge? Maybe some thyme? We could do some thyme. Or does that conflict with the, with the honey? That might. I mean, with the syrup, I mean. Yeah. I, I think the, Let's I mean, leave the it syrup be. is. It's pretty sweet, and they were simmered in something sweet. So those will be ready. And we'll put those on the buffet when we're ready. So we've got mashed potatoes heating up. We have our stuffing heating up. We've got our turkey here, we've got our cranberry sauce, gravy, gravy, <laughs> carrots, and then I think that'll do it for us today. Right. And our pickles. Our pickles. And our apple crisp for dessert. And our apple crisp for dessert. Yeah. So Thanksgiving really is easy, and yes, you can do it. <laughs> and it's, an, it's a way to sort of uplift some of the things you might do regularly, like adding maple syrup to carrots. You don't do that every day, probably. Mm. or having a turkey that's stuffed with wonderful herbs or stuffing. But it's not hard, it's just something to think through. And again, the most important part is enjoying the time that you've got with family and friends and it's not true. to worry about it. And once you, you know, once you think you don't have enough forks or the tablecloth that doesn't fit the table, all of those things, it always tends to work out because once Thanksgiving's here and you've, you've, you've got the basics down, it always works out and people won't remember the little thing that you will not, you won't let yourself off the hook for. <laughs> My cranberries are popping just like popcorn. It's really fun. Okay, let's get on to serve. Let's do it. I think we're there, Marge. I do. I think we're there. Wonderful Thanksgiving dinner. So we have stuffing that we made with the the bread and the onions and celery and herbs, eggs and the broth that we made with the turkey giblets. Mm. The carrots were cooked with a little bit of honey and butter originally, and then you saw me add maple syrup, and you can add sage or salt and pepper, and they were just on the backs of the stove, and we brought them out when it was ready. And the cranberry sauce. One cup of water, one cup of sugar, one bag of cranberries, done. And then you can embellish it if you want to, but it is absolutely delicious as is. We've got refrigerator pickles that we taught everyone how to make back at episode one, and they make a great appetizer and easy first dish with cheese and crackers or during cocktails or a little wine before you sit down for dinner. And you can say, I made those pickles myself. Right. And people will be very impressed. As this and this and this. And then mashed potato, mashed potato that we made with Tim Hobbs. And it is absolutely exquisite with a little bit of Greek yogurt, a lot of butter, and <laughs> And, some, um, and a little bit of, of milk or cream. And it is just lovely. And the turkey, of course. And the turkey. Yeah, we showed you how to stuff the turkey, how to take out the giblets and all of that for the, the stuffing juice or for gravy. And cooked it at? We cooked it at 350 degrees, 13 minutes a pound. And made sure that it reached 165 degrees yep. in the, the meatiest part of the bird and then took it out and let it sit for a few minutes so that all those juices go back into the meat. If you cook it, if you cut it as soon as it comes out of the oven, which we all want to do, all the juices run out and the meat becomes drier. If you allow that turkey to sit for a bit, 
then the juices go back into the meat, so you're going to have a juicier bird that way. Mm. Well, I think I'll touch on the gravy. Okay. Because the gravy, um, with the help of Joe's way, is smooth and velvety <laughs> and will be delicious on most everything here. I put a lot of gravy on my <laughs> stuffing. I don't know about you, but of course the potatoes as well. I can tell you Joe puts, stuff, puts gravy on everything. Oh, it's so good. And then last but not least, apple crisp. Again, if you're intimidated about the idea of making pies for your Thanksgiving dinner, make our apple crisp, which is so simple and so easy to make. If you're intimidated about making an apple pie or other kind of pie, then make the apple crisp like we made in episode three. It's very easy to make and put a scoop of ice cream on it or some whipped cream and it will be an absolutely wonderful end to your Thanksgiving dinner. Hmm. And that's it. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving from Nourishing Maine. Ooh, cooked oh, so you're, you're taking off the legs just for easy slicing, right? right? And then the thigh. The thigh comes next. I don't know how to slice a turkey, so this is very informative for me. Perfect. When you take this stuff off, it's pretty brutally to take it off, but it comes off fairly easy. It's the best meat you want to cut up in slices. Everybody yeah, we're probably not going to do that part. Great. Mm. It smells so good, doesn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. So do you like turkey skin, Marge? Oh. <laughs> do, you fight, do you fight for it? I remember as a kid getting in trouble fight. for going out Peeling into it. the kitchen and... Uh-huh. Yeah. Turkey skin is about to pass. Mm -hmm. That and the dark meat. We're dark meat folks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The herbs in there are so wonderful in terms of really being able to just impart all those lovely flavors of Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Complimented by the herbs in the stuffing. Yes. And the smooth gravy that doesn't have any lumps in it. Right. <laughs> How do you do that anyway? That's the Joe's There's a Joe way. way. I'll never tell. <laughs> you already did. <laughs> Oh, that's lovely.